Hello students, this is Sheila Devi, assistant professor from the Department of Computer Science from Sondra Institute of Management and Science. So I am going to handle web programming in my uh, previous two classes. So just uh, we'll have a quick review about this uh, chapter. So I had discussed about how exactly the JavaScript has originated. I had given a brief introduction about JavaScript and why exactly we need JavaScript and uh, what can a JavaScript do, the features, advantages, disadvantages, and the difference between Java versus JavaScript, the three layers of uh, web. So I discussed a, any web page which has JavaScript, CSS, and uh, XXTML. So this makes a very dynamic website. So that is why we need uh, JavaScript. And how to use it? So uh, how to use it? It's just by using an extra tag called script. So you can see uh, we have used a tag here called script type. Uh, so the script type will be always a JavaScript and whatever you insert inside this will become a JavaScript program. So now directly we will move on to a first JavaScript program. You all know the basics to have an HTML tag. Inside an HTML tag, you'll also have an head tag. So inside head, we include a title. And inside an head tag, you, should, you must always include a script type. See, a script type, just a moment. Yeah, yeah, a script type. So you can see this is a script type. So script type will always be JavaScript. So this specifies that you're performing a JavaScript program. And what we have typed here, we have typed, a, we have just printed a statement called welcome to JavaScript. So you can see how, so this is how we print something in JavaScript program. So to print the statement, we use a default method called document write. So this document write is something like what we use as a printf statement in your C and C++ C program, theme, uh, in your uh, scene and see out in your uh, C++ program and uh, the SOP statement that is system dot out dot print in your uh, Java program. Same way here instead of the system dot out dot print we use document dot write. You can see here. Okay. So once you have opened the script, you know that if your tag if you have opened any tag, you have to close that tag also. Uh, you have closed the script tag, you close the head tag, and you close the HTML tag. So this is the basics of your JavaScript program and this will print welcome to JavaScript. So we'll just move on to the next slide. We'll just see with a few of our JavaScript programming basics. So what are the basics? So these basics already we have discussed in our Java programming. So like Java programming we have discussed uh, certain basics like uh, how to comment, what are the keywords, and what are the primitive data types and how to declare a variable. Same way that it's somewhat similar to your Java. The first coming to your comments. So how to comment a line. To comment a line, we use just slash. So the double slash you can see here. So I've given an example also. I have uh, declared a variable called x, which is uh, has a value of five. So you have I have described here what exactly x is and what value x will give you. So to document a particular line, we'll be using comment. So to comment, you'll be using a double slash and keywords. So these are certain default words that have been frequently used in any programming languages. Like all other programming languages, here also you have keywords and they are all same. Like what you had in Java, they are all same. And your data types. So you know that uh, many you have used so many data types. So here also you're using so many data types like numbers, string, booleans, integer, etc., etc. And uh, how to declare a variable in JavaScript. So this is very important to know. Uh, here you are declaring a variable with a var command. You can see here. So this is a var command. So using this var command, you can declare a variable. And an example also have given. So this is var and h. So this is how you declare a variable in a JavaScript. Other than this, now you can see a scope. What is the scope of a variable? In Java, you we had discussed three types of scope variables, scope of variables, is or not? But in JavaScript, it's only two types. One is local scope and the one more is global scope. So local scope is one thing which will have its um, scope, that is its demand in only one particular set of function. Whereas the global scope is, it will have access or it will have scope 
it will it can it can be accessed throughout your whole program so this is all about your scope of variable so this is certain basics what we can see in a java script now coming to operators operators are also same thing that you studied in all your uh, different programming languages you have so many operators like uh, arithmetic operator binary operator binary operator you have uh, in a uh, arithmetic operators you have different types of operators like uh, addition operators subtraction division multiplication etc etc so these are the certain operators and assignment operators you have so this is all same whatever you had in java which i've already done to you in the last time so the operator and all remains same so let's not uh, take a lot of time for operators because you studied this from all your programming languages moving on to next so what is this object so we have certain we have also uh, you also know what is the objects yeah, so objects is nothing but instance of an any class so an object here we have certain ready objects which you can use it directly you can access it directly to your program for example math math objects so math is nothing but performing certain mathematical operations so document dot write means it will print a statement what it is printing it is printing the pi value so the pi value you know that what is a pi value that is 3.14 so this will be printed so to uh, get access to certain uh, mathematical operations directly uh, you can use this math object there are many such math uh, operations that you can do it so pi is one thing you can uh, uh, assign cos x sin x you can assign tan x so you just if you give an x x value it will give what is cos of x so cos 30 what is the value of cos 30 so all these things will be giving you next coming to number object so what is this number object so this is one thing which where you are performing certain operations with the help of number so you can see here there are certain properties in number object so the number object uh, max value here you can see the max value it shows you the maximum number that is being used okay so i'll show you a program for this number object also how exactly it works and just two minutes yeah you can see this is a program where you can see uh, about a math object so as you know that we have started with html tag head tag title tag title tag number object close the head close the body and you know that if it is any of your javascript program you have to put a java uh, script okay the script type you have to uh, insert a script tag with a type that is your javascript now you have initialized two variables here one is largest and smallest for this largest variable you have told that number dot max value so this max value is a property by default which is already there only thing is you can access it okay largest is the variable which you people have declared it is a user defined and minimum value is the minimum number what it gives what is possible the minimum value that is possible in numbers that so this will be a minimum value So students, there was a small interruption. So let's start again. So yes, uh, we are starting again. So here uh, I was, uh, I'll be uh, telling you again. So we are speaking about a number object. There are certain ready um, properties that are available which you can directly access. You now, for example, max value, mean value, you can see. So here I'm accessing my, the largest number, here I'm accessing my smallest number. So this largest will give you the max value that is possible and the smallest will give you the minimum value that is possible, okay? Now you can see, uh, here I've declared one number. So what is my number? So you can see a new. So as soon as you see a new or operator, you must know that you're creating an object. So you've created an object with the number 50 and you've declared a variable inside that. So for this number 50, what will be the value of base 2 so if you divide this 15 with the 2 so what is the value and if you divide this 15 number with the 8 with the basic so what is the value so you can see this and here we can see that you have declared one more variable called 13.3714 and number 2 uh, fixed fixed means it should give a fixed number it means 13 is your fixed number so after fixed number you have on just one decimal point so that is you get one that is that is 13.3 
Next, you want three elements. So that is 13.371. So this is the output what we have to get. So just quickly, we can just see what is the output of this. So I'll be executing this number uh, program. This means, yeah, here it's number program. Let us execute this. Yeah, you can see it. So this is the largest number. So it is an infinite number, which you cannot predict also. This will be the largest number. And this will be the smallest number of all. So this is base 2, 15 divided by 2. So this will be the value. And this is 15 divided by 8. So this will be the value. Yeah, 13. I told you, right? So fixed number is 30. Two fixed one means after the element, after the decimal, one number, after the decimal, three number. So this is your number program. So this is what you can see. So let's move on again back to the another object. So another object, there is a date object. So in date object, you can see uh, we have created an object called new date. So this new, as soon as you see the new, you must know that you are creating an object here. So there are ready objects in date also. So like uh, current date. Uh, so if you remember that we had executed a program called date in uh, so I think part A, program 6, we had already executed this program and I've explained you also. So it gives the current date, today's date, whatever is today's date, that will be you can represent it. So there are certain methods like um, to get the current date, you can use called current date and to get seconds, to return the seconds, you get, get seconds, get minutes, get hours, get date get day so it gives a day also which particular day is today so all these things will be displayed so this since already i have done in the lab so i'm not going to stress more on this you can just check with your program six which has already been done so these are certain ready objects that are available next moving on to the next topic called string string concatenation so you know what is string we have discussed much about string in java so, and you know what a string concatenation also means. Now, if you have two strings, now you can see here, I have two strings. String one is fiber and string two is books. And string three should be the concatenation of string one and string two. String one and string two. So, string three will be what? Skyward books. So, you are writing, you are printing a statement called Skyward books. So, this is called a string concatenation. Same way, you have many methods in a string which um, this is all same that you have been studied in your previous uh, class that is in the fifth semester when you are studying Java you had string uh, methods so what are these methods so let's see on uh, one by one so those methods are cat at so what is this cat at now if you have one particular string called skyward so in that particular skyward you want an element which is there in the index uh, 5 so what will be so s k y w a r d so you get w okay so s k y w a a a is in the fifth place so you'll be getting a so this is caret so one one particular string you have to assign so inside that you have to take one particular um, alphabet's value so that will be your index number then index of so this will tell you so now uh, you want to know the index of one particular uh, now what you do skyward you get and you're asking for the index of a so it should give the position as five okay so this will be the output of index of then last index of so if you give any string any letter that is present at the last so this should represent the last index as sky in skyward the last index will be d so it will give you the d then search now, if you want to search, you have n number of string and you want to string and you want to search for a substring in that. Okay. So, for that, you can use a um, <coughs> method called search. Next, coming to substring. So, this is also one of the things which will give substring. Now, if you have hello world and you want to search for a substring in this, so you will be giving, uh, you want a substring of uh, world. So it will give you the world as a substring. And now next is two uppercase and two lowercase. So two lowercase is one thing which converts your particular string into complete lowercase. And two uppercase is one thing which it 
converts your complete value into uppercase okay complete string into uppercase so this program uh, this particular program we have done in part b if you remember we have already done it in part b just go through it so it will be helpful for you next come into properties you can see a properties so what is this properties properties is nothing but it will describe what exactly you want to do for example now if you are uh, dealing with a constructor this what does a constructor do so it returns uh, to the string function where an object is already created okay so this returns a string function whereas length no if you have any particular string and if you want to find the length of a particular string so this will be provided with the help of this length then prototype prototype is one thing where it um, this prototype is one thing which allows you to add some properties and methods to one particular object okay now if you have already created an object and if you want to uh, uh, add some more properties to that particular object so this prototype will help you in doing this so this is certain things about string so next coming to your type conversion so friends so students you can see that type conversion you have already learned about this in your java programming it is same as what you have learned in java programming there is implicit type conversion and explicit type conversion implicit type conversion is an automatic type conversion where the conversion happens automatically by the system whereas explicit type conversion is a conversion that happens with the uh, user okay the user has to assign the user has to uh, do this type conversion so why he has to do that so uh, we have seen so many programs if you remember um, now see let's see this program yeah yeah price value now you know that java is a program where whatever the value is will be taken as a string so when everything is taken as a string so it violates the program but here you can see i have described the variable i have declared a variable as a price price is one thing which is integer so in such cases you have to uh, convert the string into an integer so at that time you have to do type casting so you can see a parse int means whatever the value you are giving as an integer so convert so system will take it as a string but you will be converting it as an integer and finally you will be showing it as an integer itself so this is what is a type conversion so this we have done it for many programs so if you see this um, whatever the thing uh, we have uh, seen you know, for example uh, yeah see this is a restaurant program this is a last program starter starter is a string so you may not convert it into integer then this is soft drinks okay soft is soft drinks again it will be like pepsi coca cola even this is a string you may not convert it then uh, selected item so this is a price you have to convert so this is what we have done it here okay can you see it so this is what we have done it here we have converted that particular uh, price that is integer into pass into so converted into integer so this is all about your type conversion so next let us see with the next topic so this is something like screen output and keyboard input uh, i already told you that to print a particular line we will be using document.write and document.line so whatever you want to uh, print okay you have to use document.write so this will uh, write what the line it has to be done then document dot write ln so web programming so this will just print web programming and what is this d you can see d right so this is bold we already discussed this and window dot alert window dot status from confirm so we will see what is this one by one in the next coming program okay so yeah so this is an example for your uh, this is an example for alert see already we have seen here right window dot alert so this gives an alert message to you now if you have given a wrong email id now for example in google you have a wrong email id and a correct password so it shows that the particular email id is wrong so to get such messages you can use a alert window okay so this is an alert window uh, i have a output also for this you can just see this this one is yeah. So this is a programming uh, program here you can see uh, one uh, paragraph you have typed that is click the button to display an alert message okay so button on click so there's a button i have declared a button 
So it is calling from my function. You have declared your function here. So we'll see in our next uh, slide what is a function on how to declare a function. So this is how we declare a function. So you can see here, this is how we declare a function. So now this alert, hello, I'm an alert box. So when, once you click on this button, it should show you um, that hello, I'm an alert box. So close this script, body, HTML. So this is the output. So just see, have a look here. Yeah, so I'll just try, okay? I'm just uh, clicking on this button. Yeah, here, yeah. so this is the alert box. Hello, I'm an alert box. So this is how you can use a window.alert. So this can be an alert box. So any, if you want to give any alert messages, so by this it's possible, so you can do it. So same way, uh, you can just see with the next program. So this program is for uh, prompt okay and so in previous you saw it uh, we saw window dot prompt yes or no here you can see window dot prompt so for this you can uh, just see one I'll declare one more example here so you know that html body paragraph this button here also i'm declaring a button i'm asking for a button and once you click on that your my function should get executed so what is that my function your function is that uh, you when, whenever you click on that you have to get a message please uh, you will be uh, asked your prompt box will ask for your name it will be giving you Sheila so as soon as you give your name it should show that hello the person name the person name is Sheila how are you today so it's not only Sheila whatever the person name you give so it should show it so we will just execute this program yeah here so click the button to demonstrate the prompt box so once I click here so this is your prompt box okay so i'll give uh, anything other than sheena so i can give you sims okay i'll give you sims okay so it says hello sims how are you today so whatever so this is a prompt box which helps you in displaying messages it takes an input and then it gives an output whereas alert is it's just an alert uh, it did not ask for an input but directly it will show if you've done anything uh, wrong then directly it will show what exactly it must uh, show okay so i exactly it will show for validation okay you can use it for validation purpose so this is, this is all about your windows dot alert windows dot prompt so this is all about it so you can see with this so next yeah looping so then these are conditional looping statements so you've studied this right from your first sim which statement if statements which statement why do i look for loop so let's not discuss more about it but uh, i'll sh for sure i'll show you in program for this uh, particular topic So no problem. So I told you I'll show you I'll be showing you a program. So this is uh, okay. Program here. Yeah, if you remember, we had executed a program called student uh, marks, yes, student marks program. We had executed this. So if you remember this program, I can show you. Yeah. So what exactly we are doing in this program? We are giving a student name, okay, class. And marks, we are giving three types of marks. There is marks one, marks two, and marks three. And the total marks is uh, marks one plus marks two. So the addition of these three marks will give you the total. 
and the average of this is total divided by 3. Okay, so you can see here. if your average is greater than 60, then it should give us A grade. Else, if so, this is the best example for your looping statement. Okay, so this is a, a program which you can take for looping statement. Else, if an average which is uh, less than 60 and average is greater than 50, then it will be declared as B grade. And else, if an average which is less than 50 and if your average is greater than 40, then it is C grade. So, this is the best example from here to here. You can see. So, this is the best example what you can um, use it for your. Uh, looping statement okay so this is all about your program yeah. so next coming to our this one is like there's a problem in it so next Condition by looping statements. We go here. So we saw there is the we saw conditional and looping statements. So there are many other programs you can just check for it. Yeah. The next topic. So it's all about objectivation and modification. So, my dear students, as soon as you see new, so you must know that you are creating an object here. Okay. So, I have created an object called person. Okay. So, you can declare it in variable itself, but this was not possible when we were given in Java, but here you can do it. So, where person and you are creating an object. So, for this, you are adding a person's uh, information like the first name, last name, and uh, age. And it's eye color. Okay, so these are the things what you have been asked for. So for this, I have a program also. You can just see here. So this program, let's copy this. Okay. So this program is telling you what you can declare it in two ways. Either you can make, you can write it as new object, and you can uh, uh, write what are the information you want to store it in an object, or directly you can do like that person. And you can write first name, last name, age, eye color, and all. Okay, so it takes directly the person's information. Um, yeah, this we have always need to write it in a script tag, close the script tag, close the head tag, and open the body. And body has uh, a document dot right means here you're just printing the first name. So this program should show only the first name. So what is the first name? The first name is Sheila. So it should show only Sheila here, nothing else should be seen. So let's just uh, execute it and say it. Let's see it. Can you see it? The first, the, the person name is Sheila. If you give the last name, it should show only power. So this is how the program is working. Okay. So this is all about your object creation and how to um, extract the value from your object. Okay. You can extract one particular value and get it done in your, with your object. So next, you can see the array. So array is one thing which you're learning it from past all the programming languages. And one more thing is here you can create an object for an array. So I have created a variable called months. In months, I have an array. So what is that array is months. So what are the elements that you are going to insert inside an array? So it is jam, pad, bar. So these are the elements you are going to insert. So we'll have see an example for an array object also. Here you can see I created an array. So I told you right, you can you can create uh, by using a new operator also like how I've done it here, or you can write it directly. You can write it directly like this var cars, var cars. Okay, inside cars you have added certain car names. Okay, Saab, Volvo, and BMW and all. So your array consists of all these three car names. Now this must show you the car names all the car names to be seen okay. so this two minutes now i'm executing yeah so this is an array program where you have all the three values inside an array so this is showing you all the three array 
values. So this is how we declare an array by creating an object and you can type the value. Uh, document dot write you can use it or document dot get element and I, get element by id. Get element by id is one thing which you'll be learning in detail in our next chapter. It is one thing which helps you in accessing any particular value of any function. Okay, or from a variable if you want to extract certain value from a function if you want to extract. So that is possible by get element by id. So this is cars. So wherever you are seeing cars, right, you will be uh, getting all these three cars here. So this is all about an array. So next, after an array, we will see certain array methods. So like we had certain methods in string, we have a method in an array also. So here you can see there are so many uh, methods that are there in an array. Okay, so let's discuss it one by one. So first thing is concat. So you know what is concatenation, is or not? So concatenation is your um, uh, joining two particular elements. Okay, so this concatenates element from one array to another array. Now you in one array you have um, uh, Olvo and in another array you have BMW. You want this two to get printed together. So you want to concatenate the two, two strings. So that is possible with the help of this concat method. So next join. Join is one particular method which helps you uh, which joins the element of an array by a separator. Separator in the sense your braces. Okay, With the help of the braces you can uh, uh, use this join method and you can form a string there. Then pop. So if you remember your data structures, uh, you might have used pop, push and all. So pop is one thing which removes and returns the last element of an array. So in the cars, okay, you have three elements that is uh, SAB, Volvo and BMW. So the last array is BMW. So this will be removed from your array. Pushes, it is adding one element to an array, but it will be in the end of an array. So it will push it in the end of the array. The reverse. So what is reverse? Is it reverses the order of the element in an array. So now if you have SAB, um, BMW, uh, SAB, Volvo and BMW, if you want to reverse it in a different order, so this is possible by the reverse method. Then next shift. Shift is one thing which removes and returns the first element of an array. So remember the push, uh, no sorry, the pop removes the last element whereas here shift it removes the first element of an array. If you want to remove it, you can use a shift. Slices, this creates a new array from elements of an existing. So you already have an existing array. So for that, you want to create, uh, create a new array. So for that, you, set, you can use slice. Sort is sorting an array. If you want to sort your array with, uh, in order to uh, numerical order or any alphabetical order, so this is possible with the help of your sort array. Then slice, slices, it removes and replaces element of an array. So this is also possible. Then to local string means it's in a local format so it returns a string in local format so whichever uh, format it's following it will be returning to string so this returns a string of an array okay what the array is having a format so that format will be followed it. unshift this adds the element to the beginning of an array okay so this is to add whereas your shift is to uh, remove whereas unshift is to add an element of an array so these are certain methods which will be using it in array. So this is uh, something similar to your string methods. Okay. So these are also certain methods which can be used and you can be doing it in an array method. So next coming on to function. So what is a function? So you know that anything that performs an action. Okay. So this is one particular command. So in um, Java we were calling it as method. So here also we call it as a method. But here function itself the f-u-n-c-t-i-o and function itself is a command which is usually used to declare a function and you can perform an action there for example in all the programs you might have used this function if you see okay so this is a general syntax what are the function known as your function function name and the parameter that you're passing inside this and what are the javascript part you want to write so that things you'll be writing it here okay so now you can see here so you're performing an action with a function. So what is the action you're performing? You're displaying a message. So what is the message you're displaying? That JavaScript is very easy. So this is the message you're displaying. So wherever this display message is being added in your program, so that you can access this function very easily. Now you can also pass a parameter inside this function. So what was that parameter? There is nothing but again that message. JavaScript is very easy. That you can do 
you can also uh, return a value from a function now this num okay so it returns the num value so anything the num which is um, modulus of 2 so that particular value will be printed here okay so this program you can see this is a general logic of create, uh, printing an even number so for this let us see uh, in a program where and all there is a function yeah you can see here so function find cost okay you are finding the cost so this is generally used to find the cost so this is function command name a uh, function is only the name and this find name find cost is the function name so where exactly we have used this find cost i'll show you Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. So here you are creating the button. So okay, the button it will have the uh, in upon the button you will have the value as find total cost. So when you click on the button, the find cost function will be called here. So what will this function do? It will calculate the, all the orders that you have been. Uh, all the orders that have been given and it will show you the cost for example now if i run this program i'll show you by running this program um the restaurant program yeah, here is my restaurant program yeah. can you see a fine total cost so here the function will be called for example now if i select my dishes that is vegetable pulao soup and one of the soft drink so i will find the total cost so as soon as i click here so it, it calls the function and it prints whatever the order has been given so as soon as i click on this it calls the function and it will show me the total cost so this is how we use function and this is the use of the function so so this is exactly to find the cost so there we have been declared and here we are calling it and it gives the cost of the uh, things that we have ordered so you can see uh, this program okay so this is how we are been doing with the program okay so see so this function is being called there and it will give you the total cost so this is how we find the cost and this is the use of the function okay so like this function can be used by use by passing parameter also and it can be used for in numerical operation also so other than this uh, we have a sort method here so what is a sort method this is used usually used to call back a function so what is this calling back a function so it actually defines a sorting um, callback function means that it returns the value okay it returns a particular value uh, see callback function a comma b is less than zero so place a before b okay so your a will be uh, so if this function is true then your a will be placed before b so this is how we compare so you can see here uh, there is an array array it is 20 10 40 so it is not arranged in a particular order now you want to sort it okay you want to sort it in a particular order so for this to sort it in a particular order you have to write a function called callback function a comma b with an a minus b so what it does is it arranges your uh, elements in an order that is 10 20 30 40 50 so this is all about your sort function and the last topic of this chapter is object constructor so what is this object constructor so this is usually to create a constructor in an object okay so this creates a function that uh, constructs an object so now i have uh, in function itself you can see that we have created an object and we have inserted all the elements for this i have a program also 
So yeah, uh, once you've created, it creates an object. So I'll show you with the program so that it will look clear for you. I have a program for this. Uh, just two minutes. Construct the program. Yes, you can see here. Uh, this is my construct of program. Uh, script type, JavaScript, function, person. So what are the person's information you're given? First name, last name, age, and eye color. And this. This, if you remember, this is a keyword which which will tell you that to execute the particular statement right now. This we have studied in Java. If you remember, in Java we have studied about this keyword. This keyword is something which will tell you to execute the uh, particular object right now. Okay, it means if you are asking for the first name, it gives the first name. Okay, now for example, you see a function walk. So this is first name is walking. So whatever the first name you're giving, right? So it should give it as she is walking. Now, what is the uh, next function you're calling it as eat? So what is the first name you're giving? So it should show that it's eating. So this is all about a function. Okay. So this is something like a function within a function. Okay. So now function person you have. So this person can walk and eat. So that is what he's doing now. For example, you have created uh, two more objects for this function. There is person, my friend, and my daughter. So these are the two objects that you've created. You created, and it must tell you have. Uh, uh, it is telling that my friend walk, my friend eat, my friend, my daughter walk, my daughter eat. Now so nowhere you're telling that she fell is walking and she fell is eating. Okay, you are not specified. You have just told that. You created an object inside that you pass certain a parameter. So what it does is, if the constructor must go to the object, it should access, and then it must give that uh, she is walking and she is eating. For example, uh, if I run this program, I show you now. Yeah. So nowhere you have typed the statement called Sheetal is walking, Sheetal is eating, Singh is walking, Singh is eating. You have just told that you have specified inside an uh, object that there are certain variables. So what are the variables? There is first name. First name is Sheetal. So first name is Sheetal. Last name is Rao. And age is 24. And eye color is blue. And here you can see that you have specified only first name. So first name is what? Sheetal. So Sheetal is walking, Sheetal is eating. Now, uh, if I change this to the last name, it should show that Rao is walking. So let's see this. Last name. Can you see it? Uh, Rao is walking. So whatever the uh, function or whatever the um, elements I call there. So then it goes and calls a function and later that will be shown in the output. So this is how your program works. Okay. So since I've given last name, the raw is walking. Same way if I give here as the last name, then it shows that we can't just keep it. So this is how, uh, this is the use of having a constructor. Okay. So this is the use of having the uh, object constructor inside a function. Okay, so this will help you in doing this. So, yes, my dear students, so this is all about a JavaScript. So, this is same as Java, whatever you have studied. Only thing is the way you write is different. For example, like initializing a variable. So, there you are initializing like int, uh, float, and all. But here you just use a var command and you initialize all the variables. And even if you want to declare a function, um, you, have, you can directly use a um, command called function. Use a command called function and you can declare a function there. And wherever you're calling a function, it comes there and it finishes its job. So this is some of the uh, so chapter 6, the things that we had to cover. Uh, so hope this will help you. And uh, be serious and uh, so I'll be sharing the slides also. Just check with this. I have uh, in, uh, the, 
um, inserted many programs also in this. For example, for alert, prompt, and all. Just ch check, uh, execute these programs. So this will help you, and you can just learn with this. Okay. And for more information, please go and contact w3schools.com. So this will help you in many ways. Okay. Uh, yes, students. Hope you all had a good day. So hope uh, this um, recording will help you. Thank you.